There's a song somebody sings, a bunch of people sing, uh, touching Jesus is all that matters. Then your life will never be the same. There's only one way to touch Him, that's believe when you call on His name. And I was thinking about that as she was singing. One stormy night, when just in time, I saw the light. That's where most of us were before the Lord saved us. Don't ever, ever get over being saved. Don't ever, ever, ever let it, let it have to take something else to satisfy you or excite you or thrill you. The fact that God saved your soul, changed your life, redeemed your, your, you from destruction, done all them great things for you is enough to shout and praise God for all eternity over. Amen. Touching Jesus, Mark chapter 5. You're going to have to get up. this one up. Mark chapter number 5. Look at verse 25. Mark chapter 5. And verse 25, I appreciate your prayer, prayers this morning. <clears throat> I've just about hollered out. I've been in, uh, I was told them last night was the first night that I wasn't in church since the middle of July. And I preached almost every one of those nights for uh, oh, six straight weeks. And um, I have just about hollered my head off, as the old saying goes. But I tell you, it's good to be on the battlefield in the vineyard and being able to at least try to do something for God. Somebody told me the other day, they said, boy, you're staying awful busy, ain't you? And I said, well, I'm, I'm a doing something. I don't know if I'm getting anything accomplished or not, but I'm a going. And once I've told you before, one of these days when the Lord comes back, the house may be burned down, but my bucket ain't going to be full of water. I want to be standing there with an empty bucket saying, Lord, I've done my best. I tried, at least tried, to get something done for you. Amen? So this morning, I want you to look at a woman here in the Bible. And uh, I want you to read. Turn this one up, Brother Roy, if you don't mind. Mark chapter 5. There you go. You're getting it now. Verse 25. And a certain woman, reminds me of... Uh, as Tina was singing a moment ago, and you think about the words of that song as I read this scripture, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, but was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press. Now that press in the Bible there means a great big crowd of people. It don't mean newspaper reporters. In the Bible that's just a great big gang. It was pressed like cramp. You've heard the old expression or packed in like sardines? Well, that's what the press was. And uh, too bad it's taken on a different meaning. But anyway, and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude throng in thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. That's what you and me have got to do. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. Now, in the Bible, and we read this story this morning, if you'll notice as you read the Bible, many, many, many miracles that the Lord Jesus Christ performed while he was on earth was for a reason. 
Number one, they were for the benefit, of course, of that person that was there. When someone got healed in the Bible, it was the Lord had mercy on them. He had compassion, and He would touch their body and heal them immediately on the spot. It was for their benefit. Not only was it for their benefit, it was for the people around's benefit that they might believe that the Lord was who He said He was. Lots of times, He said, the works that I do, I do in my Father. He said, I don't just do them just for my own glory, but that you people around may see these things and realize that I am, <clears throat> excuse me, come from God. And he said, he said uh, that you people can know that I'm of God when you see these miracles that I am performing. So it was for their benefit, the unbelievers. And then it was for the glory of God when the Lord would perform a miracle. He'd always do it for God and His glory. But there was another reason the Lord would do a miracle. And He would do a miracle as a type and a shadow of something that He was going to do for us later on. So, in type, when a person got healed in the Bible, it was a picture of you and I getting saved. For example, here this woman, here she had an issue of blood. Now, what was wrong with me and you before we got saved? We had problems in our blood, right? Our blood is no good. We came from our fathers. They came from their 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 fathers. And we all came from our great, 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 great grandma, Eve. She's the mother of all living. And Eve had a problem because she took the fruit and ate the fruit, gave to her husband, it got in their blood, sin got in their bloodstream. Sin got in their blood, went on down to their kids, went on down to their kids, went on down to their kids, went on down to their kids. That's why me and you don't have to teach our kids how to lie. Nobody has to teach a kid how to lie. You have to teach a kid not to lie, right? They are natural born liars. They already come up from the time they're that high, tricking you and deceiving you and, and crying when there ain't nothing wrong with them just to get you to come in and pick them up and stuff like that. They're a bunch of little liars. People say, oh, this sweet little darling. He ain't no sweet little darling. He is a little liar. If you don't believe that, you'll find it out after you've had him for six months or so. You'll find out. You'll say, not my little baby. Hate to hurt your feelings, your little baby. They're all gone astray. The Bible said, speaking lies as soon as they be born. You know why they do that? Because their blood's no good. You have a blood disease and you need to touch the Lord to get His blood flowing in your veins. So this woman's healing this morning is a picture and top of salvation. Let's notice that this morning. And the first thing I want to think of is her disease. She had a blood disease. It was an issue of blood. She had a bloody, running blood disease that she could not stop, like a free bleeder, like a hemophiliac. And she was not able to control it. And this poor woman had this disease. She knew that things were bad, wrong in her life. It made her weak. It made her not able to perform daily tasks like she would normally do. It made her weak, just like sin does you and I. It made her unclean. And it made her miserable. Such are the effects of sin. Do you know that? Sin makes you weak. Sin makes you unclean. Sin makes you miserable. Every one of us have had that old disease called sin. It'll make you miserable. Sin never made nobody happy. I was up showing the teenage girls some slides this morning in the class, and I've uh, got me up a little slide, some slides on the year 1969. And one of the pictures that I showed them was Life Magazine. And on the front of Life Magazine was a picture of Woodstock the world's first rock concert in 1969, 20 years ago, last month. And I showed them some pictures of it. And right on the front of Life magazine, it showed these about 2,000 hippies out there, just a small fraction of the crowd. 
And the caption said at the top of the magazine, Where are they now? And brother, I thought when I saw that, brother, that's a question, brother. That is a question. Where are those 500,000 people that were at Woodstock smoking their peace pipes, you know, and, and taking their clothes and their morals and throwing them out the, in the trash can and living there saying, peace man, love man. We're throwing out all the old life. We're throwing out all the old morals and dogmas and religion. The Satanic Bible was published that year. Year. The church of Satan got in full swing. Uh, but where are they now? Where are they now? Many of them were trampled under feet like animals. They were laying there overdosing on drugs by the hundreds getting run over by dump trucks. They were laying there throwing up, hallucinating in the mud. Girl giving birth to babies right there in the mud puddles. And brother, it was a tragic scene. Where are those kids now? I said it would be safe to say that a lot of them are in hell right now. Can I tell you something? Sin does that. Sin don't bring happiness. Sin brings misery. Sin brings torment. Sin brings unhappiness. Drugs will get you in trouble. Alcohol will get you in trouble. You will not be happy as long as you've got sin in your bloodstream. Well, she realized that she had it. And the love of sin is a cancer of the soul. The wisdom of man has never found the remedy for it. Our schools are worse now than they've ever been. Our neighborhoods are worse now than they've ever been. I read a list the other day, and it said 1940, 1980. And it showed the major problems in our school in 1940. And over here it showed the major problems in our school, 1980. Over here, you'd think it was a joke. In 1940, the teachers list the major problems and it said, chewing gum in class. Coming in late. Not getting homework done. Talking during lessons. 1980 it said, rape. Drugs. Teacher... Uh, molestation. Murder on the parking lot of the schools. And yet we've got some dumbbells running around t trying to tell us the world is getting better. Brother, I'm telling you this morning, sin brings misery. Sin brings up. And our educational system cannot solve the problem of sin. You know what they're saying? You know what they're saying now that the answer to AIDS is? They say the AIDS epidemic in America, the only hope our young people have is more education. That's what they're saying. Oh, they said education is the answer. They're getting AIDS because they're not educated. You're wrong, my friend. We're getting AIDS because we're sinning. Sin is what brings on that kind of stuff. And the only remedy for sin, you've got to have something done to your blood. Your blood running through your veins is sinful blood. Notice, secondly, her desire. Now, the good thing about this lady is, and the edge she's got on a lot of people is this. She realized she needed help. And until you realize you need help, you'll never get none. You hear me? Until you realize you need God, you'll never get God. Until you realize you need to be saved, you'll never get saved. Her desire was to be healed. People are always wanting help. But the book says before she ever came to Jesus, she went to many physicians and spent all that she had. And instead of getting better, she got worse. I can imagine her going down there to one doctor in the neighborhood, sitting down. Miss, okay, Miss So-and-so, come on in. She goes down and says, Doc says, what's the matter with you? She says, there's something wrong with my blood, Doc. He said, you've got to help me. And he said, hmm, this is a rare case, but I'm going to prescribe this, and I'm going to prescribe that, and you take this and that and this and that and this and that. And she come back and see me in about a month. She come back and see me in a month. They've done all that they knew how to do in those days. 
could not make her well. She went over to another doctor. They didn't have such things as insurance in those days. When you got sick, brother, you just paid the bill. Or you have done without and died. She went to all these doctors. She sold everything she had. She done everything she could possibly do trying to get better. But the Bible said she spent every dime she had and instead of getting better, she got worse. What that's a picture of this morning, preacher? That's a picture of people out here in the world going to everything in the world, trying to be satisfied, trying to be happy, and they'll instead of getting better, they they get worse every day. I know some that started out smoking pot. See, they started out smoking pot. I know boys that I went to school with. They 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 got a problem, and they're going to them physicians. You know what the problem is? They ain't satisfied inside. They're going out there and they say, man, you got something to make me happy? And somebody says, yeah, we're going to roll up one of these things. See, you didn't know we grew this stuff in here, did you? And buddy, they rolled this stuff up there and took it out and he said, now you like this stuff, you know, and you don't smoke them like a regular cigarette. You do them like this, you know. You see them pass them around and you know, so everybody can get their old nasty lips on it. And you, know, you pass them around in a big circle and buddy, I want you to know that old boy said, uh, that old boy said, now here, this will do it. This will do it. This will do it. But that got old after a while. Get high about 1,500 times, you know. I mean, good, good, good night. I, I need something better. So he goes to another one and somebody said, man, I got something that'll fix you right up. Have you ever tried some of this? He said, I ain't got a headache. He said, no, it's this ain't headache powder. He said, just uh, just uh, sniff this. And he said, Lord, I'll choke to death if I do that. He said, no, you And he goes like that, boy. And all of a sudden, boy, he gets a, he gets a, he has a trip. I ain't kidding you. And the next thing you know, boy, that kind of gets old, you know. And it burns the lining out of his nose. And, 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 and it eats him all up and everything. He's, you know what he's doing? He's going to them physicians trying to find out the cure. All these kids out here partying, running around last night, you know what they're doing? They know something's wrong inside and they're going out there hiding something to fix it. Boy, they just go by the right place today and miss the cure. Boy, they go up there. First thing you know, somebody says, that stuff ain't no good. This is some crack. And then you're up crack. And all kinds of immorality, pornography, dirty books, dirty magazines, dirty uh, movies. And all this stuff. Say, boy, you know what you're doing? You're trying to get help. You're trying to get help. You know things ain't right inside. You know there's a big empty spot down in here. And you're saying, God, if I had a boyfriend. You get a boyfriend, you say, he ain't the right one. That ain't your problem, honey. You've got something in here that a boyfriend can't take care of. You say, I believe he could. No, he couldn't. You know how I know he couldn't? Because there's been too many tried that and it didn't do it. Liz Taylor just got her seventh husband not too many years ago. Now you'd think, I'd hang it up for that, wouldn't you? I'd just say, fool you with it, boy. I just, Five or six, I mean, what's my Latin, Liz? He's a drunk. What's wrong with Latin, Liz? Beat me. What's wrong with Latin, Liz? Didn't want my career. Wouldn't you start thinking after a while, maybe it might be you? <laughs> maybe, maybe she's not satisfied with herself. Maybe something's missing. Deep down inside Elizabeth Taylor's heart that she hadn't got filled. You said, now you don't know Elizabeth Taylor. I know I don't. I know I didn't say I did. I'm just saying maybe there's an empty spot there. One of these doctors, he said, now sis, you take this stuff right here and you'll be, it'll fix you up. Didn't do it. Another doctor says, I'll tell you what you need. You need exercise. And I'm going to prescribe, get you in, make you an appointment down here at the spa. And I want you to start going down there three days a week. And then I want you to check out this Jane Fonda's workout aerobic video. And then I want you to start doing this exercise every day and all that, and you'll get better. So she got into all of that, toe touching and all that kind of stuff. And boy, she's a, hold on. 
<laughs> you know, they, they kind of do it like a little dance now. You da 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 Like that, you know. And boy, the music's are playing and everything. She thought this. Now, there ain't nothing wrong with that. I mean, if you want to exercise, everybody should exercise. It wouldn't hurt most of you and us to exercise a lot more than we do. You know, get down. Right? She'd, do, she'd do some push-ups. And boy, you know, and she'd do this, you know. And she'd do sit-ups. And I ain't going to be doing too many of them. And she'd, uh, she'd do this and she'd do that. And she'd do this and she'd do that. And this and that. And uh, she looked like uh, somebody in a charismatic church every once in a while. And buddy, she, she didn't get better, but rather grew worse. You know what? There's a lot of people out here running around. They're into this physical stuff, you know. Oh, yes, buddy, I'm going to tone up and all of that. But your problem is you've still got to lay down and sleep at night. You've got to die one day, and there's still something missing on the inside that exercise can't do. There's nothing wrong with exercise. There's nothing wrong with taking medicine when you're sick. There's nothing wrong with a vacation, trips, hobbies, but it ain't going to fix your disease. That ain't what's going to do it. It ain't going to do it. The next doctor says, I know what you need. How long has it been since you've been on a good vacation? She said, Lord, it's been a long time. I can't afford it. He said, go borrow the money. He said, now, and you take your vacation. Now, not with your husband. Not with your husband. Just you and some girls. Take a vacation. I guess you kind of get the drift, don't you? I don't approve of separate vacation for married couples. That's the thing nowadays. Have you noticed that? Hey, where you go? Well, my husband takes a vacation with his friends, and I take a vacation with my friends. There's something fishy down in there somewhere, and if they ain't yet, they will be for it's over with. I mean, if he wants to go off with his bear dogs or coon dogs or, and you want to go to somewhere like that, that's okay. But I'm talking about these beach trips where you go separate. It won't be long. I don't know why I said that, but I may, might be, there may be some weirdos in here this morning. <laughs> oh, you crazy old fashioned people. Well, you just think that because you're, you ain't been around like I have. You just think that. You don't know the hundreds of people that I've dealt with. You don't know the thousands that's been right here to this church. I know what I'm talking about, brother. I know how the devil breaks homes up. I know how things start going on. He said, now you need a vacation, sis. And you go out there and you, uh, oh, I'll go somewhere. Have a good time. Hit the bars. Hit the high spots. I mean, you, you know, that don't mean you're a slut or nothing. Go out there and have you a good time. Take it easy. Relax. Enjoy yourself. But her disease didn't get no better. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, the devil's out there in the world. The world tries to do everything in the world to make you happy, give you this, give you that, give you the other. Well, we're happy, we're happy. All they talk about on TV is the main thing. Are you happy? Are you happy? Are you happy? That ain't the main thing. Are you holy? Are you holy? Are you holy? Here's the main thing. You'll never be happy till you're holy. One of them said this. You'll grow out of it. Just leave it alone and go away. And of course, instead of getting better, she grew worse. But then notice secondly, or third this morning, I'll say this. Her determination. She made up her mind she's going to forget them guys and go to Jesus. That's the smartest thing that woman ever done in her life. See, she'd been to all them other doctors, couldn't get better. And she said, I've heard about Jesus Christ. I know some of my family thinks he's crazy and a fanatic, and I know I'll probably be called names, and they'll laugh at me if I go down there with that religious crowd. But she said, everything else has failed. I'm a going to Jesus. And buddy, she started to fighting her way through that crowd. She had some determination. Hear me this morning. The world will not approve. Your family will not approve. Some of you people, your family thinks you are the craziest nut in McDowell County because they think you are nut. Brother, you know why? She had to fight through the crowd. You have to fight through the crowd to get to the Lord Jesus Christ. Brother, you think everybody in McDowell County's patted me on the back? 
since I come back tonight, I've got some few things to share with you. About that. I'll tell you tonight, uh, this morning, brother, that there, there, there'll be people in your way. There'll be hindrances by the hundreds. Your family won't understand. Your, your friends may not approve. You may have people turn their back on you. You may have people stab you in the back. But you've got to come to the place where you say, hey, there's something bad wrong with my blood. I'm going to Jesus. I'm going to Jesus. No matter how much I have to try, I'm going to an old altar and I'm going to say, Dear God, and I'm going to keep on till I touch His garment. Amen? That's what you need to do. That's what you need to do. And buddy, if you ever one time touch His garment by faith, you'll feel in your body that things are different now. My blood disease was cured April of 19. 1972, I touched him. He touched me. I touched him. Whichever way you want to say it, brother, it got the job done. The old ship of Zion passed by and I got on it. You know what they say? They say if you took every book in America, just one inch paperback, I guess paperback book, that was published in America in a year, stack them up on top of each other, they would reach to the top of the Empire State Building, which is 102 stories, 3,200 times. And out of that many books reaching the top of the Empire State Building 3,200 times, there's one that has the answer to man's problem. I got it in my hand. Hallelujah! What a treasure! We have got the answer to your need this morning. Not money, not pleasure, not drugs, not immorality, shacking up with somebody, living in sin. It will not satisfy you. There's always going to be something missing inside. There's always going to be something like... <laughs> something just ain't there, brother. I just... I'm just not happy. What's wrong with me? She went to Jesus. And you know what she done to Jesus? She got right down in front of him, folks. And the Bible says she told him all the truth. You know what she done? She come clean with the Lord. Now you know what somebody in here needs to do this morning? Somebody in here this morning needs you to say, all right, I've tried all that other stuff. I've done this. I've done that. I've done... I heard a... not long ago I was preaching in a revival, and we was having testimonies. And I'll tell you this, and I'll be closing. And one lady stood up and gave her testimony, and she was crying. She looked like she's probably maybe around, I'm sure, in her 20s. She said, folks, I've done everything that a person can do. She said, you name it, I've done it. Any kind of drug, any kind of sin. She said, I've been through it all. And with tears coming down her face, that lady said, there ain't nothing out there worth living for. Happiness is in here. See, she'd been in, raised in church when she was young and rebelled and got out and went out in sin and went out in the world. But if she come back and got right with God in that revival and stood up with tears in her eyes saying, this is where it's at all along. Touching Jesus is all that matters. And buddy, when the Lord touched her, the Bible said she felt different. She got up and she said, Phew. It worked. Well, bless my soul. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And she went back home. And somebody come by and they heard her singing in her room. And she's in there singing. Then my mind goes back to that stormy night. When just in time I saw the light 
Yes, the light from that old lighthouse that stand up there on a hill. I can see her walking down the grocery store the next day. And I thank God, just like Tina, for the lighthouse. I owe my life to him. So what's this lighthouse, man? What you talking about, this lighthouse? I, I tell you what I'm talking about. He's the Lord Jesus Christ. He fixed me. And he can fix you. A priest can't fix you. A church can't fix you. I can't fix you. They ain't no use in you coming up here this morning telling me your sins. I've got plenty of my own to worry about without worrying about yours. You tell them to the Lord. You tell them to the Lord. That's all that matters. Let's stand together and bow our heads. While our heads are bowed and eyes are closed and they come and get us a song. The old song says, A woman tried many physicians, yet grew worse, so to Jesus she came. And when she finally touched Jesus, he set her free. Touching Jesus is all that matters. Then your life will never be the same. There's only one way to touch Him. Just believe when you call on His name. Now maybe there's somebody here this morning say, Brother Danny, I know you're telling the truth and it hurts and I don't like it, but I know it's the truth anyway. What I need is Jesus. If God's speaking to your heart this morning, you can walk down here, get down on your knees, and say, Lord, I want to touch you. Dear God in heaven, do something for us this morning. Help that one that needs to come. Thank you for these that are already come. I pray, oh God, that you'd move on somebody this morning that needs to come real bad. Help them to make that step. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now thank God for these that have already come this morning. Somebody come pray with these folks. Amen. If God's speaking to your heart, you need to come. Just get out of your seat. Come on. Touching Jesus is all that matters. Turn it over to him this morning. Will you? Come on. Let God spit your heart this morning. Amen. Come on.